Tonight, National Guard troops called in to hand out water, an emergency move in Flint, Michigan. You're Teams going door to door, dropping off bottled water and filters for taps. We need one up here. Water contaminated by lead. Drinking water issues Especially have been huge in the news water. lately. Everything water. between lead and arsenic, and I think it's a real opportunity for our industry. I've been here 10 years, that's my 10th year anniversary, and this is the most I've seen of any media coverage or of any water issue. Uh, nationally or internationally. Michigan's Attorney General allow, announcing indictments against three low-level government officials in connection with the water poisoning there. We will protect the victims, the families and citizens of Flint. And WQA is right in the middle of it a lot since the Flint story broke. Each and every person who breaks the law. And the president going to Flint, Michigan. Generally I have not been doing stunts here but you know. <laughs> Our activities, both at the media level but also at the government relations level, has dr dramatically increased. Uh, you know, the water around this table uh, you know, was Flint water that was filtered, and it just confirms uh, what we know scientifically, which is uh, that uh, if you're using a filter, if you're installing it, uh, then Flint water at this point is drinkable. At the end of last year, it started on its upward trend, and then after the Flint, Michigan crisis in January, it grew exponentially. So we saw that, you know, contrary to every national, state, and city and trend, has pretty much stayed um, there through right. June. It's um, kind of plateaued the and then of dropped Flint. off a little bit in correlation with the amount of water articles that are in the news right now. Um, social media has followed the same trend as the website. Um, we've our engagement doubled since January. Last year we were right around the 22-23% engagement rate range and now um, in May and June we were right around 55 and 60. The engagement rate involves people clicking on, sharing, and commenting on different social media posts, which then indicates the type of articles and stories and posts that they're um, interested in. It seems that um, our press releases and articles about specific water contaminant, contaminants uh, have the most traction. Yeah, WQA has received a lot of inquiries from a lot of members as well as from consumers about the high levels of lead that are being seen throughout the country. So we've seen it from both the member angle and from the consumer angle. So one of the interesting things we've seen with lead is that schools are now taking a more proactive approach to addressing the issues of lead and the dangers of lead poisoning with children. Schools are not required to test, but it is interesting that there are now two major school districts, one here in Chicago and also Washington, D.C., who are not only testing, but are also publishing those results online so that as parents we can have a assurance that our kids are not being exposed to lead during, in, during school hours. So a lot of schools around the country have been testing. New Jersey has a serious lead issue at the school, so does Portland, Oregon. Portland, for example, there was some misinformation that the school district gave out. So it's, it's just not Flint, it's just not uh, uh, in Michigan, but uh, Ohio had a big uh, lead story. Jackson, Mississippi had a big lead story. So it's around the country, and every day you see clips and stories coming in that Municipalities across the country have been testing their water for lead, and some come back good and some have come back bad. The main concern that most uh, consumers have and that a lot of the members have are that the levels of lead are higher than what we test for in the standards. So the standards have the influent level set at 150 ppb, uh, but as we saw in Flint, those levels, uh, the, the levels in Flint and in other areas throughout the country are much higher. And so the concern is that a lot of the products that are currently certified are not going to work in the field. So in our laboratory, we've been working on running experiments to prove that currently certified products will work in the conditions that we're seeing in the field. So we're running tests at significantly higher levels than what we're seeing in the standards.
I think now more than ever, consumers are becoming aware of water treatment. Uh, those that are in municipal uh, systems really may not have been giving much thought to the softeners or filter, uh, but that's changing. And because of the information available on the internet, they can self-educate. Unfortunately, uh, they're not always getting the right information which uh, is a great opportunity for WQA and for our members to be out there and explaining what the right concepts, what the right treatment is, and how to go about uh, getting it. So one of the other hot topics that has been hitting the news is perfluorochemicals, which are otherwise known as PFCs. Um, this would include things like perfluorooctanoic acid or PFOA. And those chemicals come from various sources including your, they're used in non-stick coatings, clothes, carpet, even paper products. But one of the interesting things is they're also used in foam fire retardants. So anywhere where firefighters practice putting out fires like at an airport. A Bucks County family has filed a lawsuit against the Navy over drinking water tainted by firefighting foams once used at two former military bases in Bucks and Montgomery counties. The Giovanni family lives in Warrington. Their lawsuit continues. You might have a source of contamination that could impact groundwater sources or surface water sources that are eventually used for drinking water. We've been following closely the various news stories, um, specific keyword searches that we've um, incorporated into our analytics data. Um, Kathleen and David in Government and Regulatory Affairs have been very instrumental in providing technical fact sheets for us, press releases, and um, in ongoing data that have been useful in uh, disseminating it on our website and on social media. Uh, definitely when stories hit the news, we see uh, a rebound effect here at WQA for certified products. Uh, definitely a lot of members and companies are interested in getting certifications for a lot of those issues that come up in the news. So things like lead or PFOA are major interest points for a lot of, uh, of, our, of our customers right now. So in addition to all the concerns about Flint and lead and all of our uh, pipes all across the country. There's been a lot of researchers who are looking at the issues in private wells, and one of those is arsenic. The city of Mustang is shutting down water wells that produce the highest amount of arsenic. What is the definition of arsenic? What is it? Poison. Yeah. Arsenic is found in a lot of different private wells, and there's several universities who are studying ways to convince the private well owner to test their water. And then, of course, after they test their water, if they find arsenic, to, to convince them to install treatment. And there's a lot of interest in WQA having a future webinar on the topic of how the treatment would be installed and how the treatment, which treatments would be effective for removing arsenic. We recognize that drinking water was going to get a whole lot of emphasis uh, in the coming years. We recognized this when we were putting together the MEP program, which is why the basics module starts off with a huge drinking water focus. It really introduces uh, MCLs, uh, explains what that means so that anybody going into a home from a dealership uh, is going to be able to talk knowledgeably about drinking water issues. And then coming up in March for 2017 convention, we also have a number of sessions that we're planning that are going to talk about these issues and they're also going to focus on how our members can take advantage of that. And of course, there's more to it than just the technical side. You really need to know how to become part of the conversation. So we're including media training on with both the uh, traditional media and uh, social media so that our members can be out where the consumer conversations are happening. Since the Flint crisis, um, we've seen a number of blogs and the number of writers and Twitter accounts grow in subject matter related to water quality. So moving forward, we'll continue to analyze our own data, but then also keep an eye on those growing topics that seem to finally be getting the attention they deserve, as water quality is not an issue that's going to go away anytime in our lifetime. The Water Quality Association and wa drinking water is such a big issue and it's not going to go away. I think every day the, the Flint has put a spotlight on drinking water. We've talked about it for a long time about point of use, final barrier, and I think now we have a great opportunity to educate not just 
our cons customers, but we have to. We should be educating our regulators. We should be regula educating uh, elected officials, both at the federal and state level. At the state level, right now we're tracking. Since I've been here, this is the most bills we've ever tracked. We're tracking about 140 bills across the country. About 50 of them are in Washington D.C. with uh, and Dick Gephardt Group is handling those. On the, on the state level, a lot of it is nitrate, arsenic, a lot of it is notification to the public about when they test and find problems. A lot of it is some of it is going to be funding. So we have an opportunity, as, as Dick Eppart said at the convention this year, we have a teachable moment. I think that's something that we can carry on now through our next convention.